when someone relies on God in their faith, then they everything else can fall into place. Yeah, I agree with that. Could I could I read Ruth uh, something real quick that might fit in with that comment? Okay. Uh, a beautiful comment. This is Second uh, Chronicles seven fourteen. I don't know if everybody knows that it. it was written 600 years before Christ was born. If my people, which I think my people are Christians and Jews, because this was written before Christians existed, so it must be Jews and it probably is Christians. If my people will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. And I think this has happened before, and it certainly is within God's power, as anything is, to happen again. Another episode of Media from the Heart. My name is Ruth Hill, and I'm your host. And today, I couldn't be more thrilled to bring this episode to you. We actually recorded this a few months ago, and I was wanting to get it up for you then. And then all the things happened with me that kept me from getting it up. But now I can put it up. And the exciting thing is I have my very first political guest. Yes. Now don't turn it off. Russell Cohen is running for president. And it was such a joy and an honor I know there are other podcasts out there that he has done and there's been more information out there since this, since we recorded this, but this was actually his first podcast ever. And what a joy and an honor it was to have him. And so I want you to listen with an open mind, sit back and relax. I really think you're going to enjoy it. I had so much fun and it was such an honor to have this man on my podcast without any further ado. Mr. Russell Cohen. I want to welcome you to a very special episode of Media from the Heart. My name is Ruth Hill and I'm your host. And today, well, I know I usually bring you actors and writers, um, producers. And today I have a first for my podcast. I have a very special guest. His name is Russell Cohen. And he is running for president. So I have my first presidential guest. So I'm just, for me, that's very momentous. And and Russell, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Ruth. It's a pleasure to be here with you. It really is. I'm so glad. Um, uh, this has been a really exciting one for, for me because, uh, again, it's a first for my podcast. And I'm just excited. Um, you know, congratulations on your bid for running for president. That's that is fantastic. Thank you. It's exciting. <laughs> I can imagine. That's in many different ways. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, so was this so out of curiosity, Russell, was this something that you've always run, wanted to run for president? No, uh, it's not been all all that long. Uh it really started about maybe six or seven years ago, uh, it, it it magnified as the country got more divided. Uh, and But it all really started right back with Ronald Reagan. I was in college and I, I really just loved that man. Um, and he was a, a role model for me. So I always watched the presidency very carefully and, uh, you know, did a lot of research on things, but I didn't think about running until... Uh, Really, when probably when Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton were competing, I thought, you know, I I I should try that. Um, And I've been thinking about it ever since. And then I registered only a few months ago with the Federal Elections Commission. Uh, So now I'm I'm in it headlong. That's really awesome. I was only asking because I know that's the thing is people say, oh, well, anyone can run for president. You know, in America, that's the big thing. And yeah. some and and you'll hear kids say sometimes they want to run for president. So I was just curious um, if that was. Well, anyone can run and it really doesn't cost a dime to register. 
it does um, get expensive from there. You know, not where I think it rules, you know, a lot of people out because they wouldn't have the resources, but it's not as expensive as I think, you know, some of these candidates spend upwards of a billion dollars. And I don't think it has to be that way. We'll find out. I sure don't have a billion dollars. So um, hopefully it can be done for far less. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, I don't think most of us have a billion dollars. I guess I mean, I guess there are a few billionaires out there, but um, that's there's a few. It's about 400 of them. <laughs> I'm not one of them. I'm certainly not either. Um, so, Russell, um, so I would love for you to be able to just tell tell us a little bit about you so that people get some background. I, I liked, uh, I thought it might be nice for you to be the one to just tell us a little bit about your story, about how, just okay. so, so we can get a little background on you. Okay. Uh, I, I am an everyday American, I think. And I, I started uh, my walk with Jesus when I was 16. I was led uh, to, to the Lord by a Methodist pastor uh, who's still a friend of mine. Uh, and my my whole life, I've been a Christian, but I've made a lot of mistakes and caused myself a lot of difficulty through this nasty little thing called sin. And um, because of that, you know, God has blessed me with some insight into things that not everybody has. Uh, I've I've sort of had a blessed life and also I've a difficult life um, that's been my own fault. Uh, and I think the things I've learned from it would help me run for office, but I'm really just an everyday citizen who um, grew up and lived in Florida my whole life. I went to school up at Furman University, um, started out pre-med and ended up with a degree in uh, business and uh, computer science, a dual major. And then I had a master's in business uh, down at Rollins in Orlando, you may know of them. You, so you said you lived here. Um, and I worked in a lot of different fields, but the probably the best one was in uh, managing high-rise real estate in Orlando. I had the tallest buildings in my portfolio, and uh, it's like running a little city. And so I gained a lot of management experience. And, um, you know, I, I did lose my first wife through divorce and uh, I'm remarried now for a couple of years, real happy. And uh, it's been ups and downs, but Jesus and, you know, has always been with me uh, and just blessed me every stage of the way. And now he's leading me to do this run for office. And I just feel like him tell, he's telling me, Rush, you gotta, you gotta do this. I'll lead you and bless you. And I'll let you know, if it's not going to work, and if it does, maybe you could win. Um, I've never been one that believed that it has to be a politician that's been a politician their whole life, or a rich person, or a famous person, or a movie star. I, I've always believed an everyday citizen can do it, because it's all about, really, to me, it's all about ideas and integrity. And throw a little faith in there. I have a lot of that. And I think that will really resonate with the American people, even though sometimes it's hard to speak of faith in a political setting. All my decisions would be uh, based on where scripture leads me and the many things I've learned through my life about, about God and Jesus and, you know, it, it's so important that I think he be, be put first in our public policy. And a lot of people scream about that, but there's not as many of them as you might think. Um, I have come to the belief that it's really important, my faith and in, in, in what I'm trying to accomplish. Um, so that's really it in a nutshell. If I missed anything you'd like me to delve into, I'll be happy to. I'm not the best at talking about my life. Um, I'd rather, if you have any questions, you're welcome to ask. But, well, I want to so. thank you first, because sometimes um, I, I know that can be a little bit daunting to say, well, can you tell me a little bit about your life? But what I love is you told us right off the bat 
what was the foundation of your life. And that which you begin with faith is something that resonates with me on the deepest level. I, uh, I'm in mm-hmm. fact, when I was publicizing this particular podcast and I put the fact that you're running for president, but you're a Christian and you're, you're a Christian who's running for president. Somebody actually called me out on it and said, well, why does religion matter? Why does it religion matter? And before I could even respond, somebody came to my defense, which is really nice um, and said, well, maybe that's something that's important to her and a leader. And it's like, you know, yeah, that, that, that is important. I'm not saying that you can't be an effective leader if you aren't a Christian. I'm not going to, I would never say that because I believe there are great leaders that that had completely, did, didn't even adhere to a faith, a, 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 a traditional, you know, Christian faith uh, belief. Yeah. But well, I, thank you for saying that. Yeah, that, that means a lot to me. I, I think there's a lot of people in America that are, I don't want to use, maybe scared is the wrong word, but they're resistant to a a Christian leader. Uh, But I I just know that our constitution and all the, I guess it was all men that founded the country. They, they were of faith. I don't know if you can call them Christians or not. I don't know history well enough, but they certainly were deists and they believed in a God and you can find Christian principles all through our Constitution. And I I just think, yes, anyone can lead. Uh, it doesn't have to be a person of faith. But I, I think it helps. I, I really do. Because I, I'm not making decisions based on what I want or some constituency or some rich billionaire. I'm making it based on what Jesus would lead me to say and do. And he's good. We all, we all should know God is good. Life is good. God is great, really. Um, So let's take advantage of what he's taught us in scripture. Um, And for those that don't believe or or don't want that, that's fine too. Uh, I just hope they're not in the majority, but you know, there, there's plenty of people that this country is freedom of religion. You can be an atheist if you like, there's no, no, should be nothing held against you for that. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Russell, as you were speaking, I mean, it, it, it's, it, it resonates so much with me that I just feel like I want to. I feel like I'm at church for a moment. Like I just want to stand up and start <laughs> shouting. It's like, yes, you know, this is this is the kind of thing that I want. That I want from a, a leader, and I really do appreciate the fact that you're. I, what I really appreciate about you is you're finding a way to stay true to your Christian beliefs. And yet you also want to be an effective leader. And you realize that you're going to be working with people who aren't necessarily yeah. Christians. Um, yeah. I love that about you, that the moderate, Thank the, you. As, as I looked over your website and I saw this whole thing about you being a moderate. I mean, first of all, love the fact that you're an independent i I really really do because as i look over our republican and democratic um parties is so they they're so divided they've so divided our country because you have people that speak out and and there's nothing against both parties i'm not saying i mean i have nothing against the parties it's great but there are people there are people who are the ones that really speak up and get the party going so that, that you're, you're so divided, you're either all right or all left and there's nothing in between. And I like the fact mm-hmm. that it seems like you're one who wants to bridge that gap and let's work together. Left, let's bring people back together and be moderate and work together rather than continuing to be all over here, all over here. And so I appreciate that about you. Well, I, I agree with what you just said. I, I, uh, I, in full disclosure, about four months ago, I resigned the Republican Party. I have been a Republican my whole life, but I'm really a fiscal or economic conservative, um, which I, I assume everybody knows what that means. Just I'm not a big spender, um, but, I, but I'm also a social moderate where I can see both sides of all the major social issues that we have. And that's really what divides us more than the economic issues. I I think most 
would say our government's pretty big and needs to be kind of cut down. And most would say, uh, you know, taxes are pretty onerous. But the social issues is really where the division is. And I just look at it from the center. Uh, and I, I think I have solutions and we can talk about them if you like, but I, I, I'm a moderate and not everyone agrees what even that means, but I'm right in the center on social issues. And I, I'm pretty conservative in terms of spending and taxes and all the economic issues. I'm fairly conservative and probably always will be. It's just the way I've lived my life. Well, and that, and that's great. I think we, I think we could use some of that because uh, I, I, as far as I can tell from everything that I have read and that I have looked at, I mean, I, I, I don't, I'm very careful about what I read because I know that so much of what was so much of what's even out in the news is skewed one way or the other. And so I try to look at both sides and not just automatically. I, I've made the mistake so many times of reading even a conservative piece and thinking that this has all the, this, this is right because a conservative wrote it. So of course it's going to be right. And they're telling me the truth. And then I find out later, ah, oh, they didn't, huh. they didn't tell me the whole truth. I it's not always the, the whole truth. <laughs> That's what I've discovered. So I've I've been burned so many times on that that I really um I, I will be one who will look at both sides of an issue, even if I don't Good. agree with it. Um, I'm gonna say, okay, what do these people believe and why do they believe it? Um and so uh, so but from what I've read, it seems like um, of course, there's a lot of issues, the social issues you've mentioned most definitely. Um um, whether it's abortion or whether it is, um, you know, gay rights or Black Lives Matter or, you know, I mean, you could list all the different things that 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 are out there and people wanting to be very divisive. So, so that's important, but it really seems like in today's economy, money is becoming a big thing. And I'm hearing a lot that people are going to be voting based, well, because based on their checkbook, they're their 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 um their bank account um who is going to be the best person in office or people they can vote for in office that are going to help them out financially and so i know you were speaking of being a financial conservative so i realize that um you haven't you haven't now am i correct you've not had any political experience am i right on that right i i this is my first try okay that's what i thought Right. So, of course, you're not going to know everything. And I'm not expecting that because we also know that those who've been politics all their lives will get up and say a whole bunch of stuff and they're all these policies. They'll make all these promises and then they don't follow through. And yeah, so that, that does happen. <laughs> yeah, it does happen quite a bit, unfortunately. Um, so it won't with me if I can do anything about it. It won't with me. I, I'm not going to say something just to please you oh, um, okay. and that I can't honor when I if I were to win. That's yes. very important to me, my integrity. So yeah, I don't do that. And I greatly appreciate that about you, uh, Russell. I, it's just, it means a lot to know that what you're telling us, I feel I can sense and I sensed it even with what I read, but, but just even meeting you right off the bat, I could just sense this is a man of integrity. He's going to be telling us the truth. He's not, he's not gonna, he's not trying to be somebody who he's not. And I appreciate no. that about you so much. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Well, so. Thank you too, because it means a lot to us. <laughs> so, so let's just say that everything works out the way that we hope that you would hope it would. That you know you do get elected. Um, what would be something that? What do you think that? <laughs> And I know it's probably hard to put yourself in that. And this might be a very difficult question. I'm not probably as good as ans as asking political questions. But what would you want to focus on? Let's say I think they say the first hundred days in office are extremely important. Um, so what would yeah. be your focus? Um, the, what you what you what you would hope your focus would be? Where where would you want your focus to be for those first hundred days in office, especially? Well, uh, that is a difficult question, mainly because it's hard to predict this far in advance. I mean, the world does change rapidly, but if it were tomorrow and I were in office, 
uh, I would focus uh, mainly on economic issues and on uniting our country. Um, I would speak to people in a way to pull them together. I would have uh, remember FDR did something called fireside chats. Yes. I love that. Uh, he sat down and tackled the issues of the day with people that understood all facets of it. And they, they, you know, I, I don't remember them all, but I know that they were productive and the people love them. The man won four terms. So he had to be doing something right. And I, I would, I really think we, we are the United States of America. We're not supposed to be divided and we are divided. I, I, I just, I just don't believe it's as bad as it appears to be in the media. Uh, Cause I don't meet people. I mean, there are people that speak their mind and sometimes can be rude about it. And I, I have to, you know, put up my defenses all day long, but a lot of it would be economic and let's come together uh, and talk about these social issues. And, you know, you can find blogs on the important ones. Uh, I research what is most important to Americans. And I write a blog about each one of them on my website. Um, but in generalizing, it would be to try and draw compromise, pull us all together on social issues. And then on the economics, um, this is where people on the left may not agree with me, but I, I think we spend way too much money in this country and I don't mean 5%. Uh, I, on my blog, I talk in terms of 30%. And I'm not in a position, you know, I don't have high-powered economic analysts and everything to study this. Um, but I have a feeling, you know, I know that like just in the last 30 years, we've added six, I think it's six cabinet positions. And they've all grown to be $200 billion agencies. And you have to wonder, is that, how did we get along without those before? And is this really critical to America? Because it does come out of the, the hand of poor people. Um, no matter what taxes, no matter where they come from, you can look today and 55% of Americans, they don't pay income tax. And it's because they can't afford income tax. And that's really you know, that's really representation without taxation. It's the reverse of what we had when our country was founded. And I, I don't want to raise taxes on people that can't afford to pay them. But I, I do think that everybody under the income tax system is running, running from taxes. They're writing loopholes every time you turn around. And so I, I'm for reforming. I'm actually for eliminating the income tax system in favor of a more consumption-based tax uh because it would teach us to be careful about what we spend it will cost taxes every time we spend and i think that's our fundamental problem china china who's our greatest competitor they they i don't know how they tax but they think long term and, and they and you know they have an entirely different economy i think it's completely controlled but we have to start thinking th long term and our people have to start thinking about taking care of themselves. Social Security is not doing it. Uh, it's a good system. I, I, I'm getting I'm getting into the minutia now. But does that sort of answer your question as to what I, where I would start? Um, economics and drawing people together on the social issues and then finding the solutions and implementing them. No, and and you answered that question uh, exactly um, wonderfully. Uh, you know, you it was it was it was great. Um, well, I thank that, you. I thought it might have been a little long winded. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you know what? The interesting thing is, <laughs> because I interview actors and stuff. I'm first of all, I'm used to people giving long winded answers. Secondly, that was not long winded. I was okay. honestly. Well, thank you. Honestly, that was that was. You want to be in my cabinet? Wow, you're being so nice. <laughs> well, yeah, well, you know what? 
I have will to think support, about that. Yeah, I'd have to think about that one. I will support you 100. percent Of it. I mean, I'm I am very supportive when it comes to. I mean, I mean, I will goodness. I'll support people. Um, I'm supportive of the government anyway. And it's interesting when you talk about income taxes because now that I'm self-employed, income taxes are a little different than when I was working for somebody. Yeah. And um. And I'm sure that a lot of people thought it was very strange when I said, I actually had to pay income taxes for the first time, but that meant that I was making money. So I was actually celebrating the fact that I was yeah. paying, paying taxes. I was like, I made enough money where I had to pay taxes and I'd never had to do that before. And so, uh, but, uh, but I do agree with you because I am one that when it comes to income taxes, I don't look for the loopholes because I'm not, I'm not like that. I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to pay what I'm supposed to, but there were times where it would be like, I can't believe I'm paying this much. And then why is somebody that's got, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, why are they paying almost nothing? It's like, that doesn't make sense. You know, I'm, yeah. <laughs> so I, well. I, I have agreement that income tax um, does need to be reformed. And I, and I like what I was hearing from you very much. Well, good. I, maybe if you want to personally look into the fair tax and yeah. uh, other consumption based taxes, the problem with income taxes, we just, you know, we send people to Washington and they just cannot keep their hands out of the loophole till. And they're, they're trying to do favors for everybody. It seems and the billionaires, you know, use their billions to ask for favors. We have unlimited money in politics now almost. So when you have a billion dollars, you're basically running the country because, you know, you're you're spending so much money to get the attention of the politicians and birds of a feather flock together and we all become what we're surrounded with. And so they look for loopholes and the billionaires, they're not breaking the law or anything. They're just taking advantage of legal loopholes and it doesn't seem we're able to stop ourselves. It seems like everyone is feeding at the trough except the poor. Uh, the middle class is really where the taxes are paid, but mm -hmm. it, it's like if you're from 55% to maybe 90% or even 95%, that's, that's where the real money is. And we've made a system where the rich and the poor really don't pay much. I mean, I know the rich would argue with that, but as a percentage of the total, I mean, they have gotten rich off not paying income taxes yep, and big tech, a lot of it. Um, we have to have a better tax system. It doesn't seem we can manage this one. And I, I don't mean just Republicans and Democrats. I mean, everybody that goes up there. There's there's so many loopholes, you can't count them. Yeah, I agree with you. There should be a loophole for maybe food, medicine, fitness, mental health care. Those are the loopholes that we need to take care of people that are struggling so they'll get better. But we don't need a loophole for, you know, a billionaire who doesn't want to pay the same amount of taxes on a piece of real estate he's buying, a, a high-rise building or something, which I used to manage them. There's a lot of tax breaks in that stuff. Right. So, okay. Yeah. No, Sorry. that's great. That no. Long-winded again. No, no, no. I'm glad I, because I didn't even, I didn't even know we'd be talking about finances, and it was like this is really good. I, I was, I was really happy to hear you say that because I know that it's something that's so important to people, and I'm, I'm yeah. glad to hear what you have to say here. Um, yeah. So I want to be sure to open it up because I could probably I, I I could probably ask all sorts of questions, but I also know we've got a nice little virtual audience here who may want to come on and ask you a question or two um, if they if they'd like to. Um, our Canadian friend, I love that. I am so glad, Kelly. You're awesome. Go ahead. Kelly and the United States has been known to have a very good relationship, right? I think the past few years, it probably hasn't been as great. You know, I know a lot of people don't want to go to the States right now. And how do you see the future of Canada and the United States? Like, if they're going back to, you know, best friends or how do you see their future as, you know, because normally, like, they work together, right? There's been a lot of things lately where they're not working 
together. Yes, yes ma'am. Well, I, I couldn't hear the first thing you said. Were you talking about the relationship between Canada and the, and United, the United States? States. Yeah. Do you see yeah. the future like going back to the way it was, say, 10 years ago? You yes. Know, as a um, to... I see a lot of things returning to normal, so to speak. I think politics is very cyclical. And I don't think God is surprised by what's going on because I, I've i written a book on it. It's not published yet, but I think politics is up and down in America. And right now, I feel we're at a low point. Uh, we're not the United States. We're the divided states right now. And Canada is a good friend. And I think um, I think we really have to work to lead this world better. Uh, I don't think we're doing a very good job in world leadership right now. I mean, I can't know for sure. I'm not in the offices of all these world leaders, but it seems to me as a country, we're like a yo-yo to them. I, I would think they don't see any consistency in us. I mean, from President Obama to President Trump to President Biden, we're kind of all over the place and it's inefficient as a country, it's inefficient for us, I believe. But I imagine the world leaders are scratching their head, trying to wonder when we're going to settle down and pick a position. I do believe, because it's cyclical, that we are going to have happy days again here before long, which you're from Canada. I don't know if you're familiar with that phrase, but it's what happened yeah. in the 1950s in America, right? And I do believe we're at a low point now and things are going to really pick up um, before too long. Of course, you know, I'm I'm supposed to be optimistic, but I believe that with all my heart. Um, yeah. I, I love Canada. I've traveled to Canada and we should be thankful that we have a peaceful partner who, you know, sure. tries their best to take care of their people on our northern border. Because look at our southern border. It's chaos. And yeah. we don't have that with Canada, and we should be darn well thankful for it, I believe. Uh, I, I I love Canada. And I'm not just saying that. I just love Canada. I, I don't really understand it like I do the United States. But if you have any more specific questions, I'll try to answer them. But I, I'm not yeah. real familiar with Canada's government or policy. Um, my sense is it's a little more to the left than the United States is, typically, which is fine. Um, yeah. Canada they, needs work too. We need work too. You know, yeah. things are the greatest here too, right? And well, uh, I think the whole know, world think, needs work, really. Yeah, yeah. But I know I used to see, you know, like when I was younger, how Canada and the United States had such a strong bond. I don't know if it was COVID that broke it, but it was almost like it was coming up to that, you know, and that I don't see the strong bond that Canada and the U.S. used to have. It could be. I, I think COVID broke a lot of relationships, personal, national, regional, everything. I, I think it was very devastating in ways we don't even fully understand yet. I really do. Yeah. Cause, you know, a lot of, because I'm in Ontario, so I get Canada, so I get a lot of the snow. A lot of people go to Florida for the winter from Canada, right? Yeah. They even have family members go there, and so... Thank you for raising our real estate values down here. I tell you. <laughs> they try. I have family that goes there. Goes yeah, we get a lot of we, we have a lot of people moving to Florida. And of course, a lot of people vacation here. But yeah, Florida, you know, we don't even have a state income tax because the tourists pay all of our taxes around here. Um, so it's it's an easy state to live in if you're a citizen. Low yeah. taxes. Uh, Yep. Thank you for your question. I, I hope yep. I Thank answered. Thank you. It. Yeah, no, you did. I was just wondering, you know, how you saw the two countries that they sort of come back together as one happy family again one day. Well, if I'm in yeah. charge, I, I like Justin Trudeau. I, I think I could get along with him really well. Um, I think we both nations have a lot of work to do, and hopefully, we'll work in the yep. same direction like we usually do. Uh, I think it would be a wonderful thing. Yeah, I agree. Kelly, thank, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Um, um, would anybody else like to? Bruce. Oh, Bruce? mom. Yes. Oh, this is my mother. Yes, I. I hi. I I did, wasn't able to hear everything you spoke, of, but what I did hear, um, 
I, with Ruth, just the way you started, that Jesus is, is your life, that he is, is your guide and director was like, wow, that's just so powerful to hear. Um, and I, and I also really liked hearing it. I, I believe our country, um, and, and you have a whole lot more hope in, in bringing people together than, than I do at this point, I will admit. It's just okay. like, how do you, oh, uh, they're yeah. so far out in, I say, left field that I, or, or right field, either way. But, uh, it's like our country is a business. And to hear that you have the background that you have to, in running a corporations and, and businesses, um, I think is also a, an extremely important uh, message to get out there. Um, and, but to, to hear you say that, I believe just as in a marriage, there's two sides to every question. There's two uh -huh. sides to every problem. And there's more than one solution. And it's a give and take. We all have to, we may not get 100% of what we want. We may not even get 75% of what we want. But everybody has to figure out what is, you know, what it, what is a something that that you cannot give on. I mean, it's, this, this is the line. And have a reason for it, not just because the somebody else is is quoting it on social media or something. So I, I I admire your your faith. I admire your uh willingness to put yourself out there and take the garbage that just is thrown at I don't mm -hmm. care who the who the politician is or who the person is that speaks out against uh what's going on or speaks for something. It's just the the backlash is just so mm -hmm. so unbelievable so i just really admire you for that and i am adding you to my prayer list i have no idea what what god is going to do i don't know what his plan is but man to have his message brought out in the next two years uh as this political campaign heats up big time it's only going to get more intense i i just um want to say thank you for being willing to be a target Thank you for, oh. for being willing to be that buffer between, um, you know, logic, just between re being reasonable and, and listening to what people have to say and hearing them. It's so important because people just don't know how to listen. They aren't hearing what the other person, I may not agree with them, but I can sit and listen to their whys, why they believe what they believe in. And that so so thank you. I just I just wanted to share that with you. I don't really have a question at this point. I I stray away from politics. I know who I I like the message and I like your message. And uh, I definitely am going to you you will be you are on my my prayer list. And I'm just going to just that God will guide you and keep you strong and that your armor will be on daily as you combat the the arrows that Satan in the world is going to throw at you. And have been throwing at you already, I'm sure. So, so thank you very much. And I just wanted to, just wanted to say thank you. Could you stay for a minute? Let me just thank you, sure. <laughs> um, Ruth. I know how you turned out so well. That that is quite a mom you got there. Thank you. And I'm sorry you're having a struggle with your husband. I'm sorry for his, you know, what he's going through. But God is good, and um, yes, hopefully you'll find. It'll be peaceful and there'll be some blessings in it. Oh, uh, there are so uh, many blessings. It's been it's been a my joy to be able to help him on his final journey to go home with the Lord. And so we'll have all eternity together. All eternity. That's and, great. And thank you for, you know, politicians. You sound like you're pretty insightful about what a politician goes through, <laughs> but you just recharged my tank for about two weeks. I can take oh, all, the, all the nonsense that they want to give me for two weeks now, and maybe even more. So thank you for all those words of encouragement, kindness. It means a oh, lot. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mom. She's she's really good about that. That's one of the reasons I, I'm, I'm grateful when she can come on, and I'm glad she was able to come on today. So, Well, I am too. <laughs> yes, I can imagine. That's good. <laughs> um. Amy, I think you had your hand up. Did you want to? Yeah, I thought so. 
I don't really have a question. I just have some comments. I really enjoyed this today. I loved the first thing that I heard when I popped in was when you were talking about your stance on God. And I hope I don't take up too much of your time here, but I really love that in a candidate. Um, I think our country really needs more of that. I mean, I just, I'm, I don't want to have any hate come to me <laughs> for, for this, but I think our country really needs more God here. And I don't know what everyone's beliefs are here, but it's just, you know, it's part of who we are as a country. And I love that in a candidate it's in our, um, oh gosh, I can't think right now. It's, it's in our uh, constitution. It's in our, uh, our, <laughs> I can't even think, sorry. It's in our pledge of allegiance. Um, God is part of our country and that's how it's it should pledge stay. Of allegiance. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, at least <laughs> it's supposed to be in our pledge of allegiance and, you know, so I think that's that's one of my most important things when I'm picking a candidate is picking someone who's like who's strong on their faith, whether it's, you know, whether it's God or whoever they believe in, but especially, you know, strong, strong in their faith, keeping keeping their faith going. We need more God. <laughs> that's my stance. So I love that. I, I, well, I think when someone relies on God in their faith faith then they everything else can fall into place yeah i agree with that could i could i read ruth uh something real quick that might fit in with that comment okay. uh a beautiful comment this is uh second chronicle 714 i don't know if everybody knows that it, it was written 600 years before christ was born if my people which i think my people are christians and jews because this was written before Christians existed. So it must be Jews and it probably is Christians. If my people will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. And I think this has happened before and it certainly is within God's power as anything is to happen again. Um, so that's why I, I, I put my faith first in everything. He's gotten me this far. And believe me, I've made some mistakes and some call them sin or whatever you want to call them. But I don't know where I'd be without, without God. I, I just don't know. I'd probably be six feet under because uh, I've made a lot of mistakes. Um, so thank you for your comments. And um God is first in my campaign. I promise you that. I love that because God leads us, you know, and he, he can help us. Like if we're, especially with a leader, someone who was wanting to lead this country or lead their community, we need God as our lead, as our top leader so that we can know who to turn to you. Because I mean, yeah. that's gotta be a very stressful situation <laughs> to run a country, you know, or to, to run any sort of leadership situation so well, we got to turn to our it, I, I often think it might be the easiest job on earth it's probably stressful but you have a lot of yeah. help up there in washington dc there there's an awful lot of help to you know i don't think you have to be a genius or anything i think you just have to love america have integrity and i think you have to have good ideas which my ideas are all i believe godly at least from my perspective on God, I, I don't have ideas that I don't think he'd be pleased with. So it's, it, it is a lot of effort to get there. And I'm sure it's a lot of effort to be a president, but I'm, I'm not dissuaded at all at how difficult that job is. I've had some difficult jobs. I just appreciate your sentiment and the encouragement because I, I do get a lot of negativity on being a Christian running for office. There's a lot of people that don't like it, but I think they're just, you know, they're a loud minority and you're probably more in the silent majority. Uh, uh, cause I, I do hear in private conversations, a lot of people of faith and faith is, is dwindling right now. If you look at the numbers, people are starting to give up on God because they're like, how can all this nonsense be happening? But 
I don't think we should give up. I think God is teaching us something. And probably even on the individual level, we're all learning things and getting better, I, I think. So God is good and he, he's in everything, whether it looks good or bad. Um, there's a verse on that too, but I don't have it on front of me, so I won't try it. No, 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 that's okay. No, well, oh, Amy, I am so with you. Um, that's what, what your very sentiment is the reason that I wanted Russell to come on because I just, it's like, I didn't even have to, I didn't even have to read everything that was sent to me because the it's true. I mean, I didn't have to sit before I made the decision. You know, I was like, I read it later, but I didn't have to read it all at the beginning because once I saw that this was a man who put his faith first and he was running for office, I, and I could just, was like, okay, that's what I want. That's what we're missing in this country is. And it, and so it means a lot to have you come on Russell and to share and for us to hear again, I mean, you actually read the Bible. I mean, that blows my mind because, and it shouldn't, but it does because candidates don't do that. You that's my secret to... weapon. Yeah, that's my secret weapon. <laughs> there you go. Because <laughs> we see the candidates putting their hand on the Bible, like if they're going to be sworn in as president or whatever the case is, but we don't, or they might, they might misquote the Bible make it say what it doesn't mean they'll, they'll be in a speech and they'll think oh yeah i'm going to throw in something from the bible and you and if you're and if you actually pay attention to it they've completely misquoted it and turned it around to make it say what what they want it to say and i love the fact that you listen to amy you listen to what she said and then you just read scripture that went right along with what she said and and that and that also shows me how much you care about people. I do. I, I love people. Jesus teaches us to love everyone. And I, I do my best. It's not always easy. Uh, it was easy with Amy, but I, I try to just, that's my perspective is love one another. Um, no, I, I don't know what, I didn't mean to say Amy wasn't easy to love. I, 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 I just, I, I just, I get a lot of blowback from people that aren't very pleasant. And I, I still, I think it's important, no matter what people are saying, if we would just talk with a perspective of love one another, we'd be much more civil and pleasant and we might get along a little better. And, you know, social media is not very constructive for that purpose. It it, it really encourages a lot of uh, unfriendliness sometimes. But um, I, I just I thought Amy's perspective is great and I, I i wish it was everywhere i mean i i do run into other things that are not as pleasant but I, i'm just grateful for this group i mean you have a an audience that's really tuned in uh, to what i'm saying and i'm tuned into them and that's good um maybe we can make this thing go viral and <laughs> and um everyone can hear about it that that's would be right. wonderful that's right well, I think Kathy, you had your hand up, isn't that right? Is that what I saw? Um, and she's been very excited. She's been she's been actually writing in chat the chat how excited she is and how honored oh, she is to be here. Okay. Um, Pennsylvania. So, wow. Yeah. So go ahead, Kathy. Russell, I just want to uh, commend you for your humility. It sounds to me like your mistakes are launching pads to God's grace in your heart. And it just comes across in such a genuine way. I thank you for that. I want to tell you, I grew up in Florida. Uh, and I was in West Palm Beach and uh, my daddy took us to over to Singer Island and taught us how to swim. Oh, and boy. And how to survive an undertow. Yeah. And I'm ever grateful for that because I'm a strong swimmer because of his influence and uh, loved Florida. Um was in a, a really influential, great youth group. Uh, and uh, then circumstances brought us up to the Northwest corner of Pennsylvania where I now live. And um, I just wanted to encourage you for stepping into uh, your calling. I think I wrote that in the chat. Uh, and also um, God has been teaching me lately as a believer to pray more muscular prayers and you have inspired me to pray um not only for you uh but for our nation that god holy spirit would lift the veil from her eyes because america is so 
dreadfully deceived. Um, I learned from a teacher recently that when we give the truth, non-believers, not only are they not hearing what they're saying, but they're hearing what the enemy of our soul is telling them. That's a stronghold. But guess what? In 2 Corinthians 10, we learn that we have the authority in Christ to demolish strongholds, to call them what they are, name them, and um, ask the Lord to remove them. And uh, so you have inspired me to pray more muscular prayers for this nation. I just want to ask one question that is probably a whole different uh, Zoom session, but... Um, <laughs> What is your take on the transgender thing? Because I do believe that will continue to be a hot topic come election time. Wow. Uh, yeah, that, that is a hot topic. And I think I can speak to that. I, I, I would like maybe in a few months to be able to speak even more about it. I'm still learning and studying that issue. But the first thing I would say about that is, transgenders, gays, homosexuals, whatever, you know, they're all in that category. I don't even know the letters they use anymore, LGBTQ something. They're all children of God. And the first thing we have to do is give them love and then respect. Um, it doesn't mean we have to agree with them. And it doesn't mean we can't call out the truth, but it needs to be done in a loving way. And for example, that's not going to be on a national broadcast. I'm not going to castigate somebody because they're transsexual. I, I might have a debate about whether there's, um, you know, more than one gender, more than two genders. Sure. Uh, and those things can hurt feelings. Just simple words like that can hurt feelings. So we have to do it in love and respect. And I'm, pretty good at that. I mean, I've, I've, I've had some challenges with people, not on broadcast, but at face to face. This is a very important topic to people. And many, many transgenders believe they were born, you know, something different than a man or a woman. And um, so they almost feel that I don't want to put words in people's mouth, but they feel that God created them this way so and he loves everyone so he must be okay with it and i just don't find that to be truth i think you know i think the i'm more simplistic there are two genders and i don't even fully understand what transgender is but i will tell you this i do not want our children being exposed to this stuff because they're not ready for it. They're not ready for heterosexual discussions. Um, it's up to the parents. It does not belong in the schools or in any kind of propaganda or any social or public setting. We have to shield our children from these discussions. And grown adults should talk about them civilly with wide open ears and learn because these people are here, they're real, they're children of God, and they have this going on in their life. And we have to respect that and help them feel part of our society because they are, and they have the right to do what they're doing. Uh, even though maybe, you know, I, I wouldn't do that, but that's just who I am. They do have the right. And I think one other thing on transgenders is I think they're just the ones I've talked to, and I shouldn't call them the ones, the, the people that are transgender that I've talked to, they just want to be accepted. Um, and they they overinterpret what a lot of conservatives say, which, you know, in their mind, it's very ugly, it's very uh exclusive. Don't get near me, don't get near my children, you're bad, there's something wrong. And there's just a better way to discuss these things. Um, but I, I'm mostly concerned about the children. I am not for changing a child physically until he's he or she is the age of majority. I think that's child abuse, quite frankly. And I won't stand for it. And I won't stand for their brains being put all this stuff in there. Um, but you asked a good question. I hope I hope that's an answer in the area you were looking for. If you have something more specific, 
I was telling Ruth before that I always welcome follow-ups because I, I can't hit a home run every time. I might just have hit a foul ball. I don't know. You tell me, are you, are you, is that an answer that satisfies you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I love that you identified all of us as children of the Lord and created um, by his hand. And yeah. uh, we need to start there in that discussion. Yeah. yeah. There, we're all, we're, we're all cut out of the same image of God. We're, we, we, there's really not that much difference between us. We even think alike when you really boil it down. People, they may have different opinions on things, but we all want love. We all want to be respected, at least men, maybe more than women. I think the women love love and the men love respect. But love is an international feeling that we all want. God made us that way. And when we're ugly to each other, it just doesn't work well. So that's just my perspective. I, I sounds like I got you an answer. Uh, if there's more. You did. You I did. Can, Thank I, you. I if you want my email or on my website and all that stuff, you're welcome to it. I don't know if Ruth can share that with you, but uh, we can talk more offline too. Okay. Thank you, Ross. Yeah. Sure. You're welcome. Yeah. Kathy, thank you so much. That was a good question. I mean, that was, that was something I feel strongly about too. So Ruth, I, Ruth, could I just share one as, as you were sharing uh, Russell, I thought about the passage in revelation that lists homosexuality in the same category as gossipers, as gluttoners, and the list goes on and on and on. And and I truly believe we all have a weakness that we are going to, that there's just something that, that we are going to struggle with till the day we see the Lord face to face. And for a person that is struggling with their sexual identity, that happens to be their weak area of the struggle for me, it was gluttony. I, I lost, I've lost 130, released 113 pounds. It's, uh, and because I was gluttonous and so it, and, and greed is in there. So it's just like no sin in I, in God's eyes, a sin is a sin. It doesn't, yeah. we, we label it as human beings and we see them as gross, but sadly, so many of the of the Christian community have acceptable sins, such as gluttony, such yeah. as mm. gossiping. Yeah. Uh, and, but we put the the sexual immorality, we put that off to a territory that we just, oh, we, they're, they're untouchable. They're, they, they cannot be saved. They can't possibly be a child of God. And it's so sad. And I agree with you. Uh, love one another. That is, if love goes out there first, in our in our genuine discussion with them, it's done lovingly, not angry and name calling. I, I despise name calling with passion. It just really gets me going. <laughs> but um, I just I just so appreciate your answer was excellent. And I, I just thank you for that. Thank you for that. Well, thank you. I, I always like to say God doesn't make any dummies. He also doesn't make any misfits. He He loves every one of us uh, the same, and and there's it's infinite, really. So I I just I cringe too when people call names because it's it's just not helpful. I mean, the the person that's having to tolerate or endure that. It's a real setback. I get called names too. I know how it sets me back. And I you almost have to just block it out of your life if you're a politician. You you um let it go in one and out the other, but people can't always do that. They they get called a name or uh you know, they get the evil eye or the judgment eye or, or whatever. It's just not helpful to anyone. So I work very hard not to do that and I would want to lead this country encourage people and set a model a good example for people to do the same because we're getting a lot of negative influences that you know we do become what we see and what what we what we're around we do we it's, it's sad but we're not this you know we are sheep in a way we're not the strongest animals there is <laughs> uh, and we we tend to listen to what's around us so i just i just am right on the same page with you and thank you for your kind words and uh, 
I'm sorry you brought up gluttony because I've struggled with that too. Still do. <laughs> you know, <little> cheek. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, this has been. I mean, Russell. I mean, I. I. I always say that. In fact, I was I was praying before the podcast and just reminding. Reminding myself and saying to God, okay, this is your podcast. You take it the direction that you want to take it. You know, this is not about me. I want to be able to highlight Russell, but it's really about God. And I love the fact that from the very beginning, it's been you, know, you right away brought up God. And that's been our focus. And you have covered, I mean, we've covered some topics here, but we've we, what I really see in you, Russell, is just your willingness to follow God and to serve him and to love people and however God's going to use you, you're, you're, you're ready to serve in whatever capacity. And um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see what the next, you know, few months, couple of years, is, where, what, what's, what, what's going to happen for you? I think That's it's about 16 months. Yeah. Right. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see that. I'm going to definitely be following. Um, and 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 I will have when when I do post this, I will make sure that all your links are there so that we can follow up with every you know, and everybody be able you know, to um, follow your story. Um, is there anything that you would like to say in closing, Russell? Well, I would just encourage everybody to stay close to God. Um, I can almost tell you scientifically that. The more sin and the more you allow yourself to move away from our Lord, the more difficult your life is going to be. Um, I'm not sure exactly how he does things, but I find blessing after blessing when I stay close to God and I stay as wholesome as I know how to stay. And I haven't always done this and it's been pretty horrific at times, uh, but, but I just find that God expects us to honor what he asks of us. And when we do, he will bless us. He cares. He loves. Just stay close to him and um, go out and vote however you see fit. And thank you for your questions and for listening to me. It, it's been an honor. We, we didn't, I didn't hear uh, Ruth say this at first, but this is my first podcast. Oh, um, and it has been a great training exercise for me as well. I have, pre-booked this week. Uh, so my marketing people are doing great, but I, I'm learning as I go how to do this. And podcasts are an important aspect of it. And I'm glad that this was my first because it's been a real blessing for me. And I thank you all. I'm so glad, Russell. That makes me very happy. I'm glad. Um, so thank you for being here. And if you guys would like to unmute and express your appreciation again to Russell, uh, feel free. Just thank you again, Russell. It was a privilege and a joy to listen to you, and and you have encouraged me, um, you, truly for our country. It's <laughs> it's been pretty good. I just hardly listen to the news anymore because it's so depressing. But I uh, just thank you for your encouragement, and, and I just see all over your face that that uh, you you are encouraged, and you're not afraid to fight this battle, and you're going in full force with God behind you. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for that. Stay encouraged, sir. Stay encouraged. And I want to just make a note that your voice is lovely and your pacing, your delivery is thank excellent. You. I know you weren't looking for a critique, but I'm a radio girl from way back. And the way you deliver the information is an asset. And God has thank called you. you for many reasons. And the way that you present yourself is um well done wow thank you i think it's this fancy camera and this fancy microphone that my marketing people recommended to me because it, it does make me sound a lot better than this old computer used to so thank <laughs> you for that that um that compliment really that's a very nice thing for you to say thank you thank you yep you know as a canadian we'll be watching the elections very closely as you know your election, you know, whether we like it or not, affects Canada, right? And vice versa. Yeah. Our yeah. elections affect American too, whoever's in 
the office, you know, so. It does. It's Canada is very important to America and I probably don't even know the half of it um, until yeah, I get into too. office. You know, like vice versa, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. And um, stay warm. Cold place. Right, well, it's summer now. We're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not in the middle of january <laughs> i think of canada is always cold i've been there twice and it was freezing both times did you come in the middle of winter well yes i i came up through toronto in january and i went okay to Banff. i've been in banff in january oh, banff is gorgeous yeah 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 i'm in i'm in ontario i'm in ottawa it's the ottawa area oh. so. okay yeah. that's north of northeast america right North, that's straight up from New York. Yeah, like yeah, it's like a like eight hour drive. To, I just had friends come back from New York City. It took them eight hours. So yes, yeah. Ontario is a province. Right. Okay. And Toronto is in Ontario. Toronto okay. is the capital of Ontario. Ottawa is the capital of Canada. <laughs> um, all right. Well, thank you again so much. Thank you, Russell. Thank you to my wonderful audience. And it has been such a joy and privilege to have you. And and you know, we'll have to do this again. But, um, I'll be back if you invite. I okay. sure will. Okay. All right. Well, everybody have uh, take care. I'll talk to you guys later. Okay. Hey, thank you. Okay. All right. Bye bye. There you have it. I told you we're gonna love this guy. Russell was an amazing guest. Even just listening to it again blew me away and reminded me so much. I love this man. I really hope that you dug in and listened to this and that maybe you learned a little something about politics and the way our country could be. Russell gave me so much hope for this country. Definitely already has my vote. Um, and But regardless, his vision for America inspires me. So, if you enjoyed this episode, I really would so much appreciate it if you would subscribe on Apple Podcasts, rate, review, join my Facebook group, there'll be a link. And if you're on YouTube, you know, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, turn on the notifications, all that. I will really appreciate it if you do that because it helps me so much. It is so good to be back with you guys. There are more podcast episodes that are going to be recording soon. And while I'm not always releasing them every week, I'm pretty close. So what I want to do is I want to tell you thank you for your amazing support of me. God bless all of you. And I look forward to seeing you on a future episode of Media from the Heart. God bless.